Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of the Worms Arena. I've got another couple of matches for you here today, starting off with QC 2028 taking on Leaky's Cruise. In the second match, we've got Seely taking on We Are Dead. And in our main event, it's Javaro taking on Q. All right, everybody, let's get into our first match for the day here. First and foremost, we've got QC 2028. Quite the beginner here, still on the scene, even though he started playing quite a while ago. He actually plays a lot more Guilty Gear nowadays. And, you know, we, I wonder how that's going to translate into uh, over to MS, but I guess there's only one way to find out as we go on to his opponent, and he's none other than. Uh, uh, wait, who's this guy? What, wait, hold on. Le wait, hold on. Leaky Scrooge? I, I've never. I've never in my days uh, heard of that name, actually. I don't know who this player is. I... Yeah, I... I don't... Who is this guy? Like... Alright, you know what? Never mind. Let's just... Uh, I mean, he's kind of a beginner, I guess. Doesn't really seem like the favorite in this one, but... Well, let's just see how the match goes, I guess. Let's uh, see what he can do against uh, Mr. QC here. Now, before we actually go into this match, I will have to note that we have a special guest commentator at the scene right now, one of the people I uh, commentated last episode, none other than Doodles. Without further ado, let's get into the match. Well, now it's over to me. Uh, that's uh, Dual Storm Beast. This is quite an interesting mirror. Uh, Leaky Screw is not really heard of, QC have heard of, however, QC gets hit first and then hit twice, twice in a row. Seems like Leaky Screws is getting better positioning at the start of neutral than QC. QC seems to be getting caught in the corner, but manages to eke out a hit on Leaky Screws there, but then runs into the melee hitbox so basic and then into another basic. First card goes to Leaky Screws, and um, QC runs right into another basic. Flash that comes out from Leaky Screws. Uh, not much else seems to be going on at the moment. Uh, except the hit there. Uh, QC's only gone one hit, so two hits so far. Leaky Screws seems to be in a more controlling state right now, but Stormwide is eternal. And it's coming a cock up cascade of hits. So now it's last heart. But, uh, QZ loses their second card, that's game on the Leaky Screws, and right into the second game. And that's Stormwide. And that's the held melee hitbox of basic QC running into it. Four hearts to two. It's a good wall, but Flash Dev lets QC survive through it. Step from League Screws lets QC get hit there again. 3 hearts to 1, 3 hearts to 0. QC yet to take a card and is still getting hit and gets hit again. Storm wide causes League Screws to get hit. Big gap in that wall. There's no big gaps in Leaky's wall, and the flash step just makes QC spawn into another basic, and that is another card gone. Game free. Here we have another wall, but however, flash step seems to be the one of the most important tools of this matchup, it's the way you get out of walls aside from 
super fast movement, but with storm super fast mo movement comes the Dittles storm wide. Still four hearts to four. Juicy's been doing a good job of not getting hit, but gets trapped in there without flash step. Four hearts to three. Looks like Leaky Screws is doing a much better job of positioning in this matchup. It's another hit. That's yet again another hit. QC would have to take four hearts in a row to take uh, their second card of the set. That doesn't look possible right now. Well, that's how it starts. Uh, uh, need the next three though. Well, there's a second. And there's a third. Leaky Screws is trying really hard to get this hit. Uh, well timed flash step from QC. This is suddenly an even game, but Stormwide is eternal. Feels like that's the first rail gun of the set. Either way, QC gets hit once again. Four hearts to free. Flash step is on cooldown right now for Leaky Screws. Has to wait this out. And it's barely not enough stalling to get that flash step out and then gets hit right again. Of a bold and brash move. Two arts to two. Two arts to one. This game three has been a a lot more equal, but Stormwide is eternal. Game four. Railgun from Leaky Screws nearly gets them hit with the melee hitbox of Basic. Three arts to free. Stormwide gets QC there. So we have three hearts to two. There is a, a gap there that Lady Screws could have used to not get hit, but movement flub. And then QC gets hit. Two arts to one. Flash step comes out from Icky Screws, uh, and the wall is nearly good, but a giant gap shows up at the bottom. It's now one heart to one heart. The gap appeared at the top there for QC to use to live. Closing in now, and the screws loses a card. I'm fairly certain that is QC's second card that they've taken. It was a good wall, but flash step into basic combo. It's insane. That's four hearts to two. Ow! That's not a nice hit. Four hearts to one. You see, he's gotten this down, gotten this um situation down to last heart, but no, that was not the time. Last card of game four. This would be. Uh, and there we go. That's both of them hit. And then there's another hit, basically after invincibility ends, and yet again this one's going by quick, very quick. And Lee Screws actually loses. 
We've got a free one here, currently. We've got some more games. QC plays a lot more grounded and... I'd say more slowly than Leaky Screws. Leaky Screws plays this a lot like Storm Beast would, if she was real. Very fast and tries for counter hits a lot. There you can see one right there, three hearts to free. Uh, okay. It's not a hit. And you see, runs into a basic that was already passed and quickly loses that card. Lucas Goose gets hit there. And the counter hit comes out. And then Stormlight is eternal. If QC can just survive the counter hits that Leaky's Goose tries to get, then combat can be mounted. And as we're seeing here, it's one heart to three. One heart to two. And the combat can always be made in, made in the spell. It's a nice wall, but Leaky's Goose just not to flash step, loses the card. Here we are at what would be Game 5's last card. You see he manages to spawn a basic wall, avoiding the wall, but then gets hit by another wall that forms. That's a scary movement by Leaky Screws there. Still scary, but it pays off in Spending a van, a flash step. You see, my mouth is starting to get extremely dry. With no flash step, QC just has to take a hit there. Three yards to two, and that must have been Stormwide. And there goes another card. We're at a set point. You see, gets a good position, but the clone's basics backstab him. Four hearts to free. Uses flash dip there, which is an interesting move. Gets hit eventually after coming out of the invulnerability. Wiggy Screws makes a good bit of micro there. Gonna do it again. The gap gets big enough to make it through while QC gets hit, and a very lucky counter hit that was, but tip for basic. And this is what could potentially be the uh, last card of this set. And that's a double hit, that's a really funny double hit. This is a good wall, but a gap formed at the top, however, didn't matter. You see, he's flashed it. You aren't to free. This is going to require a flash step, and the the held basic causes Leaky Screws to get hit. It's another good wall, but you see, runs into basic, letting Leaky Screws escape, however. He screws then gets hit by a melee basic. Last card of a uh, game six this would be, I believe. Early flash that from Leaky Screws pays off in dividends. Getting a hit on QC. Four hearts to free. Flash that is used, but the walls just keep coming. So yards to free and oh that's a bad hit for QC you don't really want that not at this point in the game and Stormwind is eternal well it's now or never and never is now League of Screws takes that one
five to one, and uh, I think it's time that we uh, take it back to Shai Yoshi guy. Wait, wait, he he won. But but how? We don't even know the guy. He lit- This is literally his first time here. How did he win? All right, whatever. Let's just continue, I guess. Welcome back, everybody. We've got our second match coming up right here. First of all, we've got Seely, a very new player who just arrived onto the scene and hasn't really shown much, if anything, yet. In fact, I don't really know a lot about the guy, but what I do know that he's got a lot of potential and perhaps that could lead to a win here today against the man who goes by the name We Are Dead. An interesting name, to say the least. He's definitely the favorite to win this match and is probably one of the best beginner players out there right now. But will his Red Hood prevail in this one? Well, I guess we'll have to wait and find out. But before we go into our match right here, we've got an interview coming up next. Well, welcome back, everybody. I'm here for another interview. With me at this time, I've got Seely. Hello. Hello there, my good friend. Uh, I'm Cape Dev to ask you a couple questions. First question will be, uh, since you are quite new to the maintenance spell scene, uh, do you have any other experience with any bullet hell games? I don't really have a huge plethora of bullet hell games under my belt. Maiden spell was actually my first um, bullet hell I decided to explore. Um, since then, I've been branching out a little into the rhythm bullet hell noise, as per recommendation of a friend, but it's still very minimal at this point. All right, well, it's good to hear you're exploring different uh, games. Uh, all right, then on to my second question. Since you are, you know, like I said, kind of a beginner still, what characters do you prefer playing at the moment? What a horrible, horrible question. Now, I have a few weird preferences. I've been trying recently to experiment with odd ways of playing some of um, what I consider to be some of the more boring cast members, like playing Hood at a unreasonably close range. Um, I haven't settled on any standard um, main yet, and I probably won't for a while, but I'm thinking about maybe trying Storm into um, We Are Dead today, if if things go well. well all right. Uh, sorry for the bad question, by the way. I didn't know it was so bad. But yeah, well, let's just let's just continue on to my final question then. Uh, about We Are Dead, he'll be your opponent for this ma match coming up. And well, he's got a little more experience than you, dude. What's your game plan going into this? What are you going to do to, you know, kind of throw him off, if you will? Uh, I... I've had a few ideas. Obviously, um, I'm expecting We Are Dead um, to end up trying to play Hood into me, um, as that's the character I think they've been playing a lot of recently. Um, as a beginner, I'm not necessarily all that well equipped to deal with Hood's pressure, so I'm probably going to have to play quite an aggressive style and not um, allow Hood to just camp me out because I'm not going to be able to necessarily always stand up to its pressure as well as I perhaps would be if I was slightly more experienced. All right, well, thank you for your time, Seely, and well, good luck on your match. Thank you. All right, well, that'll be all for me. Back to you, my fan. Hello, everyone. We're getting straight back into it again. Sorry if I didn't be here for the last one. Um, we got We Are Dead's Red Hood against Sally's Web. Red Web. Uh, I'm not too familiar with Sally's Ram, although I do know they've played it before. If you don't know, Sally's very much a beginner to this game, even more so than the normal. And by that I mean we've been only playing for about two, three weeks at this point. Whereas We Are Dead's been around for quite a while. But as I've been talking now, We Are Dead's got the first hit with a middle hit of their laser. And so does Sally with laser again. It's quite nice to see. It's a free hearts of peace now. I do think this is a We Are Dead set to win. Uh, all things considered, all of that, you know, maybe says otherwise as uh, Sally gets a nice hit with the wide there. Uh, catches We Are Dead moving. Um, so, as I was saying, um, We Are Dead played in two beginners tournaments, got second in both of them. You know, one of the strongest beginner players about against Sally, who's brand new. So, 
it's going to be an uphill battle for Sally here as they get hit by Laser again. As we are dead, it's looking to secure the card here. Only one half left to do it. Okay. Nice lasers for us, and uh, we are dead into the corner, but nothing comes of it. Oh, unfortunate. We, we are dead makes a movement mistake, fails the micro through that basic. And um, now it's one heart apiece. Oh, unfortunate. Uh, Sally walks into a wide there, and uh, we are dead takes the first card. Okay, oh, nice dead zoning as uh, Sally's been very aggressive there, although it doesn't get anything off it. Uh, we are dead's going into a corner again, uh, but it doesn't matter as they uh, get a hit with laser. Oh, nice. I think that was a wide that hit. We are dead that. Quite good to see. I think Sally's wides have been quite strong so far. Maybe we are dead moving a little too much. I couldn't tell you, but... Okay, both players seemingly being happy at the long range here. Although maybe it looks like Sally's looking for a way in. But yeah, after Ben will be fired to dodge through the laser there. Nice call to use it. Okay, oh, Sally's coming in. Past the retreat not too long after. Playing at the mid range now. Nice micro off Sally there. Oh, narrow dodge to the wide by uh, We Are Dead twice in a row. Quite nice to see. As the walls are closing in, but they stop closing in as uh, Sally walks into a basic, or you could say the basic walked into Sally. Either or. As uh, unfortunate, Sally gets hit by a basic again there as We Are Dead takes the first game. And we're seeing a switch off Sally here to the Saw Beast. I do know Sally is proficient with like seven characters ever except Lip. Um, and in the interview before you did have Sally say they were thinking of playing this Storm. So we'll have to see if it has a bit more success for them. Uh, of course Storm is notoriously difficult for beginners, although I disagree with that completely. But um, whatever, I won't get into that. Um, Sally walks into a wide as uh, they've taken two hearts fairly quickly here. It's for hearts of two. Very nice micro the green eye by Sally there. At full speed as well. Okay. Sally's using a lot of basic, but they're not walling their opponent too well. Seems like Sally's not too familiar with the setups, which is of course understandable considering how new Sally is to this game. And another unfortunate movement mistake. I think Storm's fast movement speed of wide rarely caught Sally off there as they walk into a basic. Oh, Sally's been a bit cornered here, they're looking to get out of it. And they do, nice. A clone placement uh, on Sally's half the screen. As a, oh nice, that was actually a bit of a wall there from uh, Sally. Although I feel like We Are Dead could have got out of it with a bit of preemptive dodge in there, but chooses not to. Ooh, very nice clone placement, very aggressive, as the uh, wide of the clone gets uh, We Are Dead off there. It's looking like a very close card, one heart apiece, oh, unfortunate. Just the same way the first card of the last game ended. Sally walks right into a wide. Again, that must be really difficult to um, manoeuvre a storm. You know, Especially if you're new to the game, of course. Um, nice clone placements from our Sally. Although it's gone now, so it doesn't matter too much, does it? Ooh, another aggressive so clone placement, but it doesn't matter as our Sally gets hit by the basic there. Okay. It's only such a fun character to watch. <laughs> I don't understand anything, but it's, I don't know. Okay, anyway. Oh, unfortunate. Sally walks into her basic there again. I've seen quite a lot of that. Oh, unfortunate. It happens again there. As it's looking very good for We Are Dead. Four hearts to one. This Storm Beast pick does not seem to be working for Sally, although the first heart card was close. And uh, clone placement's gone. Oh, nice. Very cheeky clone placement off uh, Sally there as he tries to melee the um, We Are Dead. Doesn't matter. As uh, We Are Dead takes the second game running, I think we're going to see a switch. No, no switch. Seems like Sally maybe still has some faith left in the Storm Beast. I think they tried for the um, basic of the clone there, the melee basic, but it doesn't work. As all unfortunate, uh, Sally gets hit again there. Oh, nice, melee basic. Not from the clone, but from Sally himself. Okay, oh no. This card is not going well for Sally. The round's only just begun and we've seen three hearts lost. It's not what you want to see, is it? Okay, nice dodges off uh, Sally here. Yeah. Although they are on the wall, which is not where you want to be, as they get hit by the basic again. That was a very quick card. Less than a minute, definitely. Okay. Uh, we've seen a lot of centre screen clone, which is probably quite wise. Uh, oh, nice. Looks like we are dead stuck. I do believe the advantage available. Don't know why they didn't choose to use it, but you know, maybe they didn't think to, or didn't react at all, but they could dodge out of it. No. Unfortunate. Sally walks into a basic again. He keeps on walks into it instead of gets hit by 
No, it's not like, I don't know, I shouldn't say that, should I? I don't know. Anyway, what nice wall off, Sally. Yeah, oh, it's not a wall, actually. We are dead, just skims picked by the top. But unfortunately, we, um, we are dead didn't decide to get out of there, and he was in a bit of a vulnerable position as he gets hit by a basic. And another one, as it's actually looking quite good for Sally on this card. Uh, three hearts to one, maybe they could take the first card of the set. Hopefully for them. Oh, unfortunate. Sally fails the micro, the blue and I there. Um, micro and a storm, you know, maybe not the easiest thing to do, especially if you're used to playing slower characters, which, you know, Sally is. Anyway, Sally does actually manage to take the first card. Very nice. Okay. I feel like this mid-range pressure is what's getting Sally quite far. Uh, maybe. <laughs> I don't think it is, is it? <laughs> anyway. Oh, Sally walks into a wide. I can't say walks into a wide though, can I? Because it's not like wide's coming to you, is it? Okay, I think I wasn't paying attention to what hit. We are dead there. But something did as it's three hearts apiece now on the last card of this game. Okay, uh, we are dead. Uses the uh, vanish there to plant a bunch of green eyes, but we get hit right afterwards. Okay, oh, very nice. Loads of basics on the screen now, but it doesn't matter as Sally walks into a wide or runs into a wide. Storm, you gotta say runs, she's fast. Anyway, two hearts apiece. Seems like the trade in hearts here. Hopefully that pattern continues as if it doesn't sell these out to this game, and they are, as they go very aggressive, but it doesn't pay off. Okay, what's next? Oh, Sally's playing the green hood. I have played against Sally's green hood, and I can say it does seem a bit cheeky, you know, switching to the opponent's main, but Sally's green hood is actually very good. Um, I've had some troubles in the past with it, but... Oh, and We Are Dead's having some troubles in the present with it as they lose two hearts very quickly. Uh, the screen's littered with wides here. Nice screen eyes, unfortunate. Uh, Sally walks into a wide. Oh, what, so much stuff on the screen as uh, We Are Dead evens up with a basic there. Oh, and We Are Dead takes the lead with another basic. So much stuff on the screen. <laughs> okay. Oh, we are dead walks into a wide there. We see quite a lot of that from both players here. You know, maybe there's just too much going on on the screen. So uh, the movement mistakes are happening. But unfortunately, we are dead gets hit by something around over there. As Sally does actually take the first card. Seems like this uh, switch is paying off, although it was a close card. We haven't seen too much aggression from Sally. Although I have seen from them that that is something they like. They like the idea of playing Red Hood, like in, you know, when I play against Red Hood, I want to be like right in the face. I'm playing against Sally, it's very strange because they also want that. So it's like they give me the position and I want for free. Um, I shouldn't be on about that. Should like we are dead having a nightmare here, losing three hearts quite quickly as uh, Sally walks into a wide. Well, the point I'm trying to make is that um, Sally rarely likes to play aggressively normally, but I don't know why we're not seeing this here. I think Sally maybe thinks they can win in the endurance match, and they do do it, as they take a card there with the basic, and the game of course, the first game they've taken, and... Wow! <laughs> we are dead on the way. I know they have a pocket star, but I didn't know they had a pocket lift. Very... strange. I've never seen this before. Okay. I wonder if it'll pay off. It's sort of like what Axum Jinx does, isn't it? You know, like switching off your main to avoid the mirror match. You know, like, it's a bit of a statement from Sally, isn't it? Switching to your opponent's main and forcing them to switch off. Amazing. Anyway, uh, Sally lands a fair sit there with a nice basic. Love to see it. It's, looks like there's uh, some flowers up, but they're not rarely blocking off we are, uh, Sally's movement, sorry. Although that wide does definitely help a little bit. Sally seems to be fairly free to move in the left half of the screen, so it is a bit puzzling that they decided to move to the right half of the screen, but they did. But it doesn't matter, as uh, We Are Dead has a bit of a nightmare again there, getting hit sequentially a few times. Okay, oh, that did not look like a hit on my screen. Anyway, uh, We Are Dead gets hit by something, whatever I think was the basic there, twice in a row. Okay. The we Are Dead charges a flower, centre screen. Fairly similar position to the other one, but Sally has to approach from the top side if they want to approach, and we are seeing them do that now. 
but it doesn't matter as he got hit just beforehand. As it's looking very good for Sally this game here. Three hearts still on. Um, this switch does not seem to be working for uh, We Are Dead. You'll probably see a switch back now as they just get hit. Let's see. No switch back. Although Sally switches to Red Hood. We've got weird switches today. <laughs> I'm not sure what the Red Hood switch was about, but. Um, maybe Sally is seeing the light. I don't know. I think I like Green Hood better. Actually, do I? I don't know. Okay. Oh, nice. Um, Sally backstabs. We are dead there with the cool eyes. Oh, and we see it again. Very nice. We are dead. Lost two hearts in a row. Now. A round start. Not what you want to see for him. Okay. Oh, I didn't even see those knives. It's like they appeared as soon as they hit We Are Dead in my eye. I don't know how, but... Yeah, this little thing is not working, is it? We Are Dead loses that card very quickly. See our Dead's having no trouble at all. We are... Not We Are Dead, Sally's having no trouble at all, she said. Although they did have a bit of trouble dodging through the wide there. Of course, the inner ring of Licks wide is a bit awkward to dodge. Oh, nice. Sally just outside of the dead zone. Basic, and they get hit with it. As the... Uh, we are dead is just getting mauled to death by this basic. Just seeing it time and time again here. Um, oh, narrow dodge is the basic there. We are dead nearly lost this game. Okay, if we don't see a switch off now, we are dead lost the set. I'm calling it now. Okay, yeah, we have seen a switch. Okay, Sally's back on the green hood. That's a bit confusing, isn't it? But anyway, Sally's green hood against we are dead's red hood. I think we are dead's uh, green hood. I mean, Lick, so he needs a bit more time to develop before they show it off in tournaments and exhibitions and whatnot. Uh, anyway, We Are Dead, unfortunately, taking two quick hits here. Um, Sally's taking nothing so far. Quite nice for him. Again, loads of wides on the screen. Uh, we Are Dead gets hit by a kunai there. Uh, Sally runs into a wide, so it's three off one for Sally now. Something like this will be a quick card if We Are Dead doesn't do something about it. Oh, unfortunate. We are dead. Maybe didn't realise there was a knife coming for him and stands perfectly still. Dies as a result. Oh, unfortunate. We are dead. Runs into a wide round start there. It's far out to free to Sally. Oh, unfortunate. It happens it again. Far out to two. We've seen We Are Dead lose a lot of cards early game here. We've seen it twice in a row now. Although they do return with a nice um, basic uh, just outside the dead zone. Unfortunate. Uh, we are dead runs into the crew and I there. I can't say at that time because if you look back, he did run into it. Although he probably had no choice in the matter anyway, so might as well accept your fate that happens. Anyway, it's three hearts to one to Sally. Three hearts to zero to Sally. That was a very quick game. Uh, Sally takes it. For one game remaining, why is Sally switching to Storm? Sally needs one game to win this. I think they're traveling at this point. Um, this storm did not pay off the first two games till he tried it. The Red Hoods played off the first four games he tried it. So now we've switched back to the storm. You know, very interesting logic there. It it has to be trolling, doesn't it? Um I don't know. Okay, anyway, this storm is not working out so far. See the move from the stake there are Sally as they walk into a basic and then they stay. They get hit by a basic and walk into it that time. Um, it's far as one to We Are Dead, who's looking very comfortable here. I'm slightly less comfortable now, as we get hit by a wide. Um, I'm a bit confused by Sally's decision here, but... Maybe they want to prove a point that the Storm is capable of doing it. Although, they're maybe failing to prove that point right now, aren't they? So... We'll probably just see a switch back in the next game, so... Uh, maybe Sally just wants it to be close, you know? As they get hit by a kunai there. Sally seems to be very aggressive as the storm of noticed actually. Um, quite often. Oh, very aggressive storm clone placements. And it pays off as it uh, gets wider. Oh, we are dead. Looks a bit cornered there. But it doesn't matter as he gets a full screen hit with the basic. As uh, Sally's down to one heart, zero hearts. And I'm guessing we're seeing the red hood now. Or the green hood, I guess. No, we're seeing the frost. <laughs> Um, in my opinion, at a beginner level, this matchup is a bit tricky for the Frost. I know at an expert level, it's the complete opposite, but um, I'm not really sure what Sally's thinking. They've only got one game to work with here. 
I don't think this will go well for Sally. I think we had heads one. I know it's a bit early to call, but... <sighs> See, Sally gets it by the knives there. Oh, the kunai. Kunai. Just notice, I don't get anywhere to kunai outside the maiden and spell very often. Kunai. Oh, whatever. Um, Sally gets it. We are dead gets it. Sorry, they're like basic and guessing. I mean, it is fast, isn't it? So, um, we are seeing... Oh, looks like we're seeing a bit of sort of stuff in here. So maybe Sally has a bit of an understanding of fast. I did play against their fast once, actually. So I do know it exists. As I said, they play seven of the eight characters. Very nice off Sally there. Lands a hit. Okay, oh, very close uh, wide by Sally again. Now he lands a hit. Doesn't pay off though. Oh, there's no real risk to it, is there? So, oh, unfortunate. We are dead. Get hit by the air basic there. As it's uh, two hearts to one in Sally's favour. So you know what? In the wrong. It's working out for Sally so far. Just one more heart, and they took the first card, and they're in a good position to win this act. But just one more heart. But just from we are dead's perspective, it's just two more hearts. Just one more heart. As uh, Sally tries to be aggressive there, and it fails miserably. Okay, now We Are Dead vanishes and it pays off as Sally gets hit. I think We Are Dead had the burn vanish to avoid the basic there, it looks like. As we are on mock up the last card of the set. Uh, four arts to We Are Dead, four arts to Sally, one card to beat. I mean, one card to. St oh, I'm stumbling over my words here, aren't I? Uh, two cards to We Are Dead, one heart to Sally, one card to Sally. <laughs> well, unfortunately, uh, We Are Dead gets hit by the basic there. Um, Sally does not try and uh, redirect those uh, kunais. Gets hit as a result, as they're on two hearts now. Oh, very nice dead zone enough, Sally here. Okay. Oh, it's a lot of good dodging as uh, we are dead to pressure. Maybe not there though, as it's on one heart to Sally, three hearts, so we are dead. It's very close to the end of the set here, and it is the end of the set as w Sally walks into a wide, but. The last time, what a set. You know, I think Sally had We Are Dead there with the Red Hood. I mean, we saw four games of Sally's Red Hood and they won all four of them. And didn't win a single game outside of that. But I think Sally's Red Hood was so intimidating that We Are Dead even switched off of his main for two games there. But I, I don't know what the reason was. But at the end of the day, We Are Dead won the set. 5 to 4, so well done to him. And I'll give it off to Shushi Guy to announce the next match. Welcome back again, probably for the last time today, as we're going on to our main event. Starting off with our main event, we've got Javaro, two time tourney winner, very strong Frost. That's what he is known for playing all the time. In fact, he has been known as the Frost main. Only plays that character apparently, and all has a habit of doing very well if it weren't for his opponent QP probably one of the best main and spell players of all time and well his storm beast is something different if you were going up against that well it's gonna be a hard time no matter what you do not many people play storm beast but QP just happens to be one of those players that knows exactly how to optimize the character in fact, QP is so good that the last five tournaments he's participated in, he's won four. He's that good. He's just unbeatable, if you will. But will he prevail this time too? There's only one way to find out. But again, just like before, we're going on to an interview first instead of going to the match. So let's go do that right now. Welcome back, everybody. I'm here back at it again with another interview. Standing with me right now is none other than Javar. Hello. Hello, Javar. Yeah. Over the over the months, over the years even, you've had a lot of tournaments and you've placed really high in plenty plenty of them, honestly. And well, with your accomplishments so far, what, what are your goals here in uh, Main and Spell? Uh, I would say that, um, you know, I'm... I'm playing because it's a really fun game, but uh, I've been always been more on the uh, sort of defensive dodging side, trying to just, you know, avoid getting hit by people's projectiles rather than trying to hit them with mine. I've found that this game is most fun when you're doing that, and everyone's always told me that I have to be more aggressive 
but uh, I've just been wanting to practice more because that's the way I enjoy playing the game and with playing in tournaments and seeing people do these things and me try to me doing well being able to just out dodge them it kind of makes me feel like I can show people that you don't have to you know play aggressive and throw it mix-ups and just try and force like checkmates on people you can dodge even what people call checkmates if you're good enough and you can just outlive people until they tire out and you beat them and I think it'd be good to realize that the possibility so that's what I'm trying to do Awesome, you know, uh, seeing you right here, uh, it doesn't actually say Javaro above your, uh, above your, uh, you know, character. It actually says Solo Frost, man. Are you, have you always played Frost, like, throughout your entire career? Yeah, uh, it is an interesting observation for me to have that name, but it is true. I have been a Frost main since I started playing the game. Uh, I... I actually kind of chose the character as a joke character from another game I used to play. Um, but when I started playing the character, I really liked what she did. And uh, it just kind of stuck with me to play Frost. And I haven't thought about really switching off. There's always been a little, you know, it's been difficult in certain matchups to play this character, especially because this character is a bit more offense focused. But I play to her strengths in defense, and play to like what I want to do with defense and have been trying to just grind as much as I can uh, with Frost. Uh, but in short, yeah, I've been playing Frost since I started. I haven't switched off. Awesome. You know, that's entirely a uh, valid way to play the game, obviously. Honestly, having a main is better than just switching it up all the time, in my opinion. Uh, then coming to my last question, which is a very interesting one. Talking about your opponent, not other than the man himself, QP, perhaps known as one of the, if not the best, main and spell player alive. I mean, at least up there, obviously. But uh, about the matchup, Frost, Storm Beast, of course, Storm Beast usually has the upper hand. What, like, what do you think about it? What, like, about the matchup going into this match? So, with. Frost versus QP, or I mean, sorry, Frost versus uh, Storm. Uh, I do agree that's probably a rough matchup for Frost. Many people think that it's just outright impossible. There's just nothing that Frost can do. And I think offensively, that's true. Storm is faster. Storm has uh, better melee. Uh, Storm can choose to disengage whenever she wants to. She has all these abilities that just destroy people in melee. And I think she's uncontestable that way. But I think that what people aren't maybe thinking about as much is how much Frost can really just survive against Storm. Uh, if Frost is able to read everything Storm is doing and has really good execution, I think she can live for a very long time. Theoretically, maybe even forever, but at least at the human level for a long time. And if the Storm just can't deal with this, keeps trying to get these checkmates, can't land them, and just tires out from all of the... Uh, dodging that she has to do and all the risks she has to take in order to cover up Frost's escapes. I think it can lead to Storm beating, uh, making mistakes and losing out. It's hard to say what the matchup is like theoretically when both players are playing at their best, but at least if we take a reference at me versus QP, we see that QP does win more, which kind of aligns with the idea that Storm has a better matchup against Frost. And of course, QP is just really good, so it could just be that QP is just better. But sometimes I have managed to win against QP. Uh, I think I've even had a somewhat recent win against QP. Not too recent, but somewhat recent. And I think it shows that, again, to my point, Storm can make mistakes. And if Frost does really well to survive, uh, she can win against the people, at least the human level. It's really hard, and I'm definitely trying to push it. And QP for sure beats me more than I beat him. But... Uh, I haven't given up trying to dodge in this game, and I haven't given up on Frost. You know, I stick to my goals, so I don't think I'm going to give up trying to prove that Frost does have at least some kind of chance in the matchup, even if it is just not losing instead of winning, because that's the biggest strength I think she has, is that she can just not lose that matchup. I may not be able to force a win, but can not lose until Storm <laughs> does. Yeah, I understand. It's a... It's kind of a survival game, I see. All right, well, that was the last question I had for you, Trevorrow. Good luck on your match against QP. You're going to need it.
thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. All right. Well, that was all for me. Back to you, my fan. Hello, we're getting straight back into it with Javaris Frost against QP's Wham. I'm not sure what they're playing at, but, but you know, it is what it is. Okay. Oh, QP goes in for the Novi Fire. It doesn't work. Javara rolls out. Um, I'm expecting Javara just to sit back and micro for the whole game. Because that's a very effective strategy against Wham, in my experience. I feel like this is one of the Frost's better matchups as well. So, again, I don't know what QP's doing with it, but... Uh, again, I don't know what QP's doing, they were just standing still there as uh, Javara's basic uh, got them right in the face. But, uh, very strange decisions from QP all around here in the first card. Okay, very nice micro of Javara, although it's not particularly challenging against Swam, is it? Ooh, shouldn't have said that. Anyway, whoa. Oh, nice nearly fire, catches Javara out. I believe he did have stun there, but he must have missed the timing on the parry. Oh, I thought he could get out of it somehow. Okay. And it's uh, actually two hearts to one for QP now, so, you know, it's working out somehow. It's quite good for him. Okay, nice micro from both sides here. I mean, usually this is how this matchup plays out, but QP's been a bit more aggressive here after they've been hit. It's one heart apiece, it needs to uh, do something to change that. Okay. Just to match up all right <laughs> as uh, QP fails the micro and gets hit by the basic giving the first uh, card to Javara here okay oh nice round start stun wave maybe that shows QP is not familiar with Wham because they can fairly easily just nearly fire through stun wave anyway Javara takes the first two hearts it's looking a lot better this game already this card sorry uh, only maybe what 20 30 seconds into it and Javara's already taken two so uh, some nice micro off QP here you know, and Javaro, although again, I feel like why I'm so easy to micro like 90% of the time. So, can you add a color mix? Although, whoop, that's a bit unfortunate as uh, that that was a very interesting idea of Javaro there, but it didn't seem to work as um, QB gets hit anyway. So, it's a uh, free to one to Javaro now. Okay, nicely he says, and oh, Javaro takes it. I think there was a bit of a spectator lag there, but. Is what it is, and <laughs> Javaro maybe sensing a bit of trolling off QP decides to return with a bit of trolling himself as he switches to the Arcanist. Um, I have seen this Arcanist before, although I'm not sure if it's the play, but you know, I think both players just having a bit of fun here. Okay, anyway, uh, Javaro's already taken a hit so far, as oh, very narrow dodge of the wide and the laser there. From uh, Javara. Um, some nice close range uh, pressure from uh, QP. I sort of had to double take down and said QP because it's Wan, but uh, <laughs> still confusing myself. Anyway, uh, oh, I was going to say it's been quite a while since we got a hit, but uh, QP gets in a nice close range basic and then falls to either the uh, basic or the um, moon right afterwards. And oh, unfortunately, Javara was just outside of the clock there, so they got hit. But they respond with a basic, which uh, catches QP out. Quite nice. Okay. Oh, I'm seeing a lot of spectator like there. I'm not entirely sure what hit Javara, but something did. Oh, nice bait of the movie fire. Although I'm not sure if it was a bait or just a nice reaction. Perhaps. And sort of Javara didn't really get anything off it except <laughs> wasting the cooldown. Anyway. This isn't going good, is it? <laughs> two Novi Fires I've got. I oh, know not two Novi Fires, one Novi Fires got Javaro. Uh, but he responds with a basic. Oh, nice close range wide catches QP out. Plus, Arcs wide is quite powerful, in my opinion, anyway. Um, maybe some people <laughs> disagree with that. I don't know the ones, but anyway. Okay. Oh, nice narrow, very narrow dodge of the wide by Javaro, but it doesn't matter as they get hit right afterwards. Ooh. Nice dodge of the uh, Novi Fire. Okay. I haven't seen many debuffs on uh, QP so far. I'm not sure how familiar Javaro is, or maybe debuffs aren't to play in this matchup. Like, I'm not an Arcanist, so. I think they are, though, but anyway. Oh, very nice uh, close range pressure off QP, which is making it a bit awkward for Javaro, but he does manage to just survive for quite a while here. Oh, nice Novi Fire catches Javaro out. And. QP takes game, one all now. 
Let's see what they do. <laughs> Maybe they're on random. But that is an option here. Um, because to predict the Storm Beast and play Storm Beast yourself, I don't know what's going on. Anyway, Dvar is on the yellow storm, uh, QP's on the purple storm. Uh, this, uh, I'll be very surprised if Dvar takes this game. As they've been, Dvar got walled there, but uh, Flash steps out of there. So a nice wall from Dvar, I'm guessing uh, QP will have to ban Flash step, but they don't. Oh, it was on cooldown, sorry. So a very nice play from Dvar there. As it's uh, three hearts apiece now on the first card. Okay, ooh. Uh, this, this is a matchup, isn't it? I've said that twice now. <laughs> okay. It's, but I'm a bit confused from all this, to be honest. Um, well, I don't know what Javar is doing on the Storm. I'm not sure what QP is doing. I mean, QP is technically not trolling anymore, are they? They're playing the Storm, but... It's, <laughs> I don't know. I'm sorry, it's just a very silly matchup. Anyway, the yeah, walls are closing in as Javar has been walled, but... Never mind, they were walled. I'm not sure they flashed up there. Must have. Anyway, they get hit by a wide soon afterwards, so it didn't matter. Okay. Oh, well, the screen is covered in basic here from both sides as Edvara gets walled in and finish QP finishes the wall, sorry, with the uh, top basic. And then it goes in for the melee right afterwards. Uh, Catch and Edvara are out. First card's going about as you'd expect. QP takes it quite demandingly. Well, there was a nice hit off Edvara. Um, okay, QP's playing very close range here, and it does seem to be working. Okay, oh, looks like Dvar is a bit trapped there, but he gets out using the uh, very fast movement from a uh, wide. Of course, Storm is like a jet. Nice flash step there. I'm not sure why it was nice, but it was. Okay, oh, nice wall here. Oh, never mind, it's not a wall at all, like Nami looked like for a minute. Um, oh, another one. This is a wall, surely. Yep, it is, as uh, Dvar flash steps out of it. Okay, well the walls are closing in now which is where this matchup gets uh, very interesting as the entire screen will soon be covered in basic and nothing changes soon. Oh and the walls are at their minimum position. Uh, unfortunately Dvara was playing a bit too close to the clone there and they get hit as a result as Dvara's clone is completely out of the field, who knows where they are. Um, okay there they are, as Dvara summons it again. And, uh, unfortunately Dvara gets a uh, Hit there as it's uh, two games to one to keep you know. I mean, I don't know what Tavaro was thinking. Um, <laughs> Tavaro! <laughs> no! <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, he's on the web. I don't think QP is trolling. I think QP's, you know, decided to ta start taking this seriously. And uh, Tavaro maybe hasn't got that message yet. <laughs> but, oh no. Solo Frost main. That's what the tag is at the moment. Oh, very nice micro off Javara, but it doesn't matter as uh, they can't sustain it for long and they get um, forced to burn Novi Fire, but it didn't matter as they get hit anyway. Oh, nice wide, catches uh, QP out. Okay. Oh. Uh, what's Javara doing? I'm sorry. I should be taking them seriously. Maybe this is a next level counter pick. Uh, you know, who knows? Oh, nice. Uh, tap a sick off QP there, sort of finishes the wall off. As um, three out of two to QP now. A lot of the screens covered. It's looking a bit tough for Javaro as they get hit by probably a wide there. You're know, probably going to get uh, hit by the basics anyway. So it was a lovely wall off uh, QP. As we're seeing again, another big big wall. Uh, Worm just does not have the tools to get out of this. Oh, maybe not. As uh, Javaro lands a hit, which uh, lets him get out of it, of course, with the in invincibility. And, ah, oh, unfortunate, there's uh, the pink thing there, the not see that wide at all. Gerardo probably didn't tie there, but still hit him. Hi, ping is so... I mean, I'd, actually, I don't even know what the ping is, you can't tell, you're a spectator, can you? I, I don't know, maybe I'm just complaining on behalf of Gerardo when I shouldn't be, but anyway. Okay, unfortunate. I do think maybe Gerardo should just be happy to get hit there, it doesn't seem like nearly fire is rarely helping him get out of it. Maybe it's just a waste of a cooldown. I don't know, maybe, even if it's like a 1 in 10 chance you get out of it, it's worth taking it, isn't it, I suppose. So, um, anyway, it's not looking good for Javaro. Oh, it is looking good for Javaro, free heart apiece. <laughs> um, 
Oh, very nice wide. It's looking very good for Javara now. Three hearts to two. It's actually taking the lead. <laughs> Another wide. Okay, maybe Javara has this. Maybe this is the next level counter. Okay. okay. Um, Wham's wide so powerful. You know, I'd say it's one of the most cool looking moves in the whole game. Just like the power of it. I mean, that doesn't make it powerful, but I am wider. Uh, unfortunate. I don't think there was any chance Javara was getting out of that wall, even with Novi Fire. As uh, QP's trying to catch up here. You know, you can't let Javara win on a secondary, can you? A solo Frost mean on Wham. Oh, unfortunate. Another sneaky wide there that I didn't see hit Javara. Um, it looked like that clone's in a very good position to wall Javaro, and we are seeing it here. As Javaro is done for. Never mind. Is that three games to one now for Kipi? Should be. Very unfortunate. Okay. So now Javaro is taking it seriously, and Kipi isn't. But it's like they're taking turns trolling. <laughs> Maybe they want this to be a close set so the game 10 can actually be close with uh, Javaro's Frost against Kipi Storm. That's what I hope anyway. Um, it's looking okay for Javara here because this is, of course, one of Frost's best matchups. I think if you ask the expert players, they will say this is the best matchup. I know some players like Ailey have said this is the worst matchup in the game uh, from the HUD's perspective. So it will be interesting to see. Um, yeah, Javaro is just stalling until Min Wars by the looks of it. Because uh, Frost's basic comes very powerful at Min Wars. And uh, Red Hood just doesn't have the tools to handle Mid Walls too well, in my opinion. And probably most people's opinion as well, actually. Um, nice dodges. We haven't seen a hit at all. It's been quite a while. Both players just seemingly be happy to stall each other out. Oh, never mind. Jara uh, rolls in a bit riskily and gets hit for it. Okay. Oh, nice. Wides on playing off for Javaro as they get hit by a kunai. Um, there's been a lot of wides off Javaro here on the wall, but it doesn't seem like uh, QP's falling for them. Maybe a bit of basics in order here. Oh, never mind. Shouldn't have said that. Javaro gets hit with a wide there. You know, fifth times the charm, six times the charm. That's what they say, isn't it? Okay. I don't, I don't even know what to say. I just... Uh, this, this set's been so weird. Okay. I think Javaro will have this, even though there's a rough start, because again, this is a really good matchup, and Javaro is very proficient in it. We've seen him take uh, sets off the likes of Ren, for example. You know, who's, of course, one of the best Red Hood players of all. Of course, to play Sun as well. Okay. Oh, nice. Uh, Javaro got a hit with the basic there, as uh, QP responds, and we're hitting the basic, as it's one heart apiece now. It's actually looking quite close. I'm surprised QP's managing so well with this. Considering you know the strength of Frost in this matchup and the strength of Javaro in general, and maybe the lack of strength you'd expect in QP's hood. I mean, I've never seen a QP hood before, but okay. That's, uh, I'm a bit. I'm sorry, I'm just so confused. <laughs> oh, nice. Uh, QP lands the vanish. Uh, parry. Can you call it a parry? It's not really a parry, is it? They're just running out the way. Anyway. Um, oh, nice. Um, Javaro wasn't in the dead zone of basic there as they get hit. As uh, QP actually manages to take a card. I'm sure a lot of people will be surprised about that. But uh, Javaro goes in for the basic right away and it does work. I mean, not the basic, the wide. And now they try it five more times. Doesn't work any of those times. QP knows what to expect at this point. Oh, nice done. Uh, QP doesn't land the parry. Okay. Kind of what? Javaro. Uh, it's hard to commentate this because I feel like both players are clearly trolling. Maybe they're not. Maybe they're not. Maybe this is serious next level gameplay that none of us could have expected. You know, it's above us all. <laughs> I don't think it is though. <laughs> what are you doing? Javaro, you've got other moves. It's not just wide, you know. <laughs> Javaro, you can't lose in this matchup, surely. Oh no. Javaro stocks are not going to rise after this one. Come on. I mean, one heart is not too much to take, is it? Come on, just take one heart, Javaro. Save yourself from the shame. Never mind. Javaro walks into a wide as it's uh, four games to one to keep, you know? And Javaro starts taking it seriously. QP, of course, 
stops taking her seriously as we're seeing a frost firstly. Both players taking turns to troll. Actually, it's sort of like weird turns, isn't it? It seems like they're doing a sort of a two game rotation. You know, Javara trolls two games, QP trolls two games, and so forth. Maybe that is what we're seeing. Maybe this is collusion. I mean, there's no money involved, so there's not really anything on the line, but, you know, who knows. Okay, nice. Uh, Javari plays a very nice range and uh, gets a hit for it. Okay, Kipi tries to plant a, base, a flower where Javaro is about. Doesn't work as Javaro gets hit by the inner ring of the uh, roses. Not the roses, the flang, the flangs, the flowers. I know how to speak. Oh, nice spot dodge. Is that what you call that spot dodge? Ah, whatever. Doesn't matter though, as Javaro gets hit. Okay, what's going on? What's going on? Sorry. <laughs> um, there's quite a lot of, there's actually a good lick off uh, Kipi here. There's a lot of pressure coming out. Um, it seems awkward for Javaro, but of course Javaro loves being in awkward situations. That's how he plays this game. Um, nice uh, roll into basic combo there off Javaro. Gets a hit for it. As it's one heart a piece, it's not one heart a piece, it's four hearts a piece as Javaro takes that card. Okay. Oh. Oh, what a stun, what a stun. Um, I, d I don't think that was the play, but QP is not a lick. I mean, not a, yeah, definitely not a lick. And the uh, don't know how to play this character, as it seems, as Devaro gets away with that very cheeky sun wave. Anyway, <laughs> Devaro is camping the flower, I mean the butterfly. Uh, the, you know, he loves being in these awkward situations, as it seems. But, um, okay, now Devaro is going away from the butterfly as it disappears. And I was going to the right half of the screen as the walls are starting to close in. This could be bad for Javaro. As what well, even hit him? Someone get a replay of that. Nothing hit him, I swear. Anyway. Um, what's going on? Javaro is losing this card so far. Although he's got the card advantage. So maybe it's not too big of a deal. As he gets hit again by the flower. Uh, interesting choice to stun wave, maybe it was defensive. It must have been because QP was at the complete opposite end of the screen there. I mean, it would have been a very disastrous offensive stun wave, wasn't it? Wasn't it? <laughs> anyway, I can't commentate any, anyway. oh, whatever. Anyway, the walls are closed and then QP's lick seems to be actually working here. You know, next level counterplay. Even though Storm already has a good matchup into Frost, but next level comes to play, that's what it is. Cube, oh, Zoraro is in a very awkward situation here, but he gets out of it with a roll, but he's still in a very awkward situation. But of course, this is where he likes to be, but it doesn't matter. Even if you like to be there, you're still probably not going to survive it, are you? Okay, now, this is a bit disastrous for Zoraro. It's four games to one, one card apiece. Um, as QP is not taking this ser seriously, Zoraro hasn't either, but... I think it's going to take a miracle for Javara to win this set. You know, that's a start. Get a hit with your basic. That's another start. Not another start, that's an expansion to the original start. You don't start twice, do you? Anyway, um, Javara basic and. Oh, nice dodge it through the air in a ring of wide. That's what it's called, wide. Okay. QP. Javara. Runs into a butterfly. Surprisingly, butterflies aren't friendly in this game. Well, nothing's friendly in this game, really, is it? So maybe that's not too surprising. Nobody dispels friendly. Yeah. That's the only friendly thing. Anyway, uh, Javaro is walled into the right half of the screen mostly as uh, Keepy finishes off that wall. As he's Javaro's now in a bit of an awkward position, as we've seen quite a lot now. But uh, Javaro goes in, rolls in wide. Love to see it. Three hearts to Javaro. You know, he's uh, preserving his honor here. You know, he's not losing to Lick as well. We're seeing four to two to Javaro and all. You know, maybe he's got a chance. Maybe. <laughs> okay, now finally they're taking this seriously as Kipi realizes he needs to secure this. Wait, it was Javaro's turn to troll. Oh, this is terrible. They were taking two game rotations, weren't they? So now it should be Javara's turn. But Javara said, no, I'm not traveling anymore. I'm playing seriously now. Unbelievable. Next, maybe this was the mind games. 
think this is what Jahar is doing all along. And now he's just like completely destroyed QP's mental. And now Jahar is going to clearly easily win the whole set just like that. You know, who knows? Anyway, um, we have seen Jahar win these before, but you know, QP's storm is so powerful. I think he's won like four of the last five tourneys he's entered, only losing one to Eilie. Um, and you know, that has been all with Storm, except that one random Tony that has halted, hosted. Um, so, I, 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 I want to be confident in Javaro, you know, as a Frost player, but... Uh, this, I suppose Javaro has had some uh, success in this matchup lately, I'd say in the last ATM. Javaro went 3-2 against QP in Grand Finals. You know, losing, but you know, losing quite closely. That's more than you could expect in this matchup, I'd argue. So, anyway, should we talk about the games? Shouldn't I could be our last game here as uh, Javara gets hit by a nice basic there. There's uh, three outs, one to QP. As a uh, nice wall comes along and Javara rolls through it but gets hit by a sneaky wall height. As it uh, could be Javara's last card here, QP's hoping not. Okay, seems Javara is playing to the left wall as he has to as these basics are coming in. Javaro rarely needs to get over this wall and he doesn't manage it. As he uh, burns the wave uh, naively as it doesn't work. And another wall's come along like five seconds later. Oh, not a wall. Very good from Javaro. Burns uh, roll and gets out of it. Or can you say Burns roll when it's got a three second cooldown? Whatever. Anyway. So it's uh, far out to two for QP though. Maybe not looking too good for Javaro as another roll, another roll, another wall's being formed here. Um, oh, the Javaro gets out of it. Very good dodge of the basic by Javaro there, the uh, charge basic. It doesn't matter as he gets hit by another one from the clone this time. As it could be Javaro's last heart, and it probably is, as uh, QP's got four. He's playing this card very well, just constantly walling Javaro. And unfortunately, that's going to be the end for Javaro. As he rolls past the basic and gets hit by a wide. You know, here's what it is. What was that set? 